Hello and welcome to Cute Sports and thank you very much if you're just joining us. I am Mamudu Gajaga. Coming up on the show, the development of grassroots football has taken a new tone as Holland Football University returns to the Gambia to train some players and coaches so that their football would improve. First, a referees assessors course to improve match officials' performance wrapped up on Friday. Will it improve the performance of the referees? We ask that question. And there are some changes at the Gambia Football Federation backroom staff, that is the senior national team to be precise. There is a new assistant coach, a new physiotherapist and also a new doctor. Plus, FIFA's decision to play the 2021 FIFA World Club Cup in June and July it could kill the Africa Cup of Nations. Not my words, but words of veteran coach Claude Leroy. Well, for more on this and many more on Q Sports, stay tuned. Welcome and thanks for joining us. This is Q Sports. I am Mamudu Gajaga. Let's begin the show with grassroots football development. In order to play football to be better in the game, you would have to get the right training, not only physically, but technically as well. And in achieving that, you would have to get the right person, the most qualified technician to be able to train you to attain that. Mary and Jogan, Founder and coach at Holland Football University returned to the Gambia for the third time to give training to young players and also young coaches so that they would up their game to another level. The four-day training brought together local coaches and players, both male and female, at the FIFA Gold Project, now called the Football Hotel. For more on that, let's get this report. With the aim of enhancing performance of the players and coaches through proper training, which requires focus and understanding, Football Equals is a project in Holland that is now being introduced in the Gambia. It creates a global new truth about diversity. It trains boys and girls in mixed teams based on their talent and not their gender. Jürgen has been a coach for 26 years, holding his UEFA A license and years of experience coaching all different levels and ages. So uh, the first training session with uh, the U14s, uh, to be honest, in the beginning, the first 15, 20 minutes, I was, I was like in shock, really. They looked at me during the, during the exercises if I were a ghost or something. They didn't have a clue what to do. I was talking about offensive first touches, about how important it is, about defensive first touches, about frontal, frontal first touches. And I tried to put those first touches into an exercise and they went everywhere, uh, but not the way I want them to go. So I really thought, okay, what's going to be, what, what, what kind of training session is this going to be? But during the, uh, the exercise, like last year and the year before, I saw them improve. The case is that they are physically okay. They are mentally okay. They have the will to get better. They have the will to get a, to, to become a professional play, player. But they don't have a clue how to train. They are not used to do this, to do technical ex exercises which have relations to the game. We always analyze the game. You see technical stuff and you have the technical stuff that you see in the game that you analyze. You have to put it into exercises and that's what they have to improve without resistance, with half resistance, and in, in the end with full resistance. But I didn't have a clue about those exercises. So it took a long time to explain the exercises, simply how to rotate, how, 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 how to go where, with ball or without ball. And, and these the, are some of the basics in football. And that's, that's full basics. That's what we do in Holland, with all the respect. We do that with guys, girls from eight, nine years old. During the exercise, they began to understand it. And then it became fun, also for me, to be honest, 
Then it became uh, to, to be fun. I saw some good technical stuff and I saw talent with some of the guys, not all of them. Also guys in it, they don't have enough talent to reach a, a particular level. We have to be honest with that. But I also saw guys that can improve a lot. Well, and again, during those exercises and uh, especially during the 4v4 four four line, uh, line game, I saw what they're able to do. And again, in this one first uh, training session, they had to get, to use, get used to me also. I saw them go like this again. So imagine, imagine, I told you uh, last year, imagine when you give those kids the opportunity to train four times a week on a proper pitch, with proper balls, with proper pennies, with proper cones, with proper coaches. Imagine where those guys can end up. They can be national players. They can move up your country, the Gambia, on higher atmospheres, for sure. But you have to invest in them one way or another that's the case and that's what we are here for because we love the country we love the kids and we love to to bring the kids a little bit further the ultimate objective is to create professional and sustainable football education for boys and girls in west africa with local coaches being in charge in the future officials at the gambia football federation are also committed to support the project to develop football i feel greatly honored to be part of this great program going on here at the moment um, for me i feel really delighted really you know if you are struggling to do a particular thing somebody comes and facilitates and makes it easy for you i think you have to be honored and i feel greatly honored to be part of this program here really and looking at football in the Gambia, we are all talking about grassroots development. Do you think this is one of the way of supporting the project? Oh yes, it is. You know, I, you know, I'm at the executive level, and as the third vice president, I am responsible for women and grassroots football. So really, this is part of my area, and I feel I feel greatly honoured. You know, we can we cannot talk of getting good players in the future when we don't develop the young ones. You know, development of football has to start from the young ones. And the direction that they have taken really is the, is the right direction. I think the project can never succeed without the official support from the Federation. Yeah, um, we, it, it costs us a lot of money to come here with our staff and arrange everything ourselves. So uh, if the Federation can make sure that we don't have to pay for the fields, it will help. And so everyone can take a part. We find sponsors for getting our staff here for free and they can help us with giving the the fields for free so I think it's very important that it's everyone takes a small part takes a small responsibility in helping the boys and the girls getting chances and helping the male and female uh, getting chances it is indeed you know for the for the for the for the development of our youths youths we're talking of you know, from girls boys you know, and girls and so on and so forth means the country now if somebody comes out you know to help the country I should not sit in my office over there and then see things going down and then saying, oh, the technical department doesn't do their job, oh, the technical department missed this thing, so I should also miss it. It is, in their, it is a heartfelt concern for GFF in general, you know, subsidiarily, about the Gambia, the Gambia Football Hotel also, our responsibility to make sure that football is developed in this country. For the young players and coaches, they call it a unique opportunity as it will make their performance better. Yeah, the session was great. We have learned so many things because the training that they were giving the kids were technical and tactical trainings, which is the most important inside the pitch. Because with the technique and the tactics, you'll be able to play a good football. Okay. So we enjoyed the training very well and we'll have learned okay. so many things. You're still an active footballer and maybe perhaps one day when you retire you want to take up coaching as a job. Um, seeing the first introduction in dealing with kids. Um, are you impressed that with some of the things that you learned here, um, when you also see kids around your area who are playing football, you can help them? Sure, sure. I will do that because um, sometimes I do go to my field near me. We have kids in my area, around my area. At times when I go there, when I'm free, where there's, when there's no training in my ground, I do go there and then help them with the, the sessions that I have used to do in my session, okay. uh, in my training ground. Yeah. So I used to help them with it. So coming here, uh, engaging with the kids, it, it will give me experience. I will have so many experiences so that wherever I go, any ground I go to, if I want to exploit what I have, it will be easy for me. As a female footballer, let me ask you this question. 
where do you see the future of women's football in the Gambia? Gambia. It will go higher, higher. Yeah, it will go up to the ladder because it is developing every now and then, every day. More new things are happening. You are having more players. The demand for it is going high. More players are coming and then more competitions are ahead. And then we are developing as time goes on. It's funny. Huh? It's nice. It's nice. Yes. Okay. It's good. I do not I did not never knew that I will come here to train. My train is very good. Sometimes today our train we train our cones and we play when I come out to play. I see my my train, how did I train very well. Mm. You know, I'm very I'm very uh, happy to see to see me to come and, and play here. Okay. But what did you learn today? Is it the passing? Is it the, the ball control? Or is it about um, when you play 1v1 to score the goal? So I learned how to break the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, when I when you shoot the ball very hot, I cannot break it mm -hmm. well. Now, but today I can see when they pass me, I can break, I can dribble, cut a school, I can school. Mm -hmm. I have a one shot. I see yeah, I, two shots. It's good. I see, yes, my train is very good. I am very happy to join you people because this time is my first time to join you people. So I am saying big congratulations because I have learned many things about this here today in the training ground. So I know that I will be continuing joining you people so that I can learn more about this thing. So keeping the ball dribbling, I cannot do it. But I can see I am learning many things here. I can do now, I can break the ball and pass because this... This man also helped us to do this, do this critical dribbling mm -hmm. and passing and shooting. So I learned many things about it. Okay. And we also do one v one. You will go and press the ball and pass. Okay. When you re when you take the ball and you go and score, yeah. I learned many things. We do not also do that in our training ground, but we do many dribbling in our training ground there. Okay. You think with this, it's going to help improve your football? Yes, it, it will help me. Now to assess the performance of referees. You might be a great referee or assistant during your time, but at some point you would have to call it quit. Usually at the age of 35, referees would retire. Some of them in this country at their retirement age now are match assessors and also instructors. Last week they had their maiden assessors training at the FIFA Gold Project, now called the Football Hotel. These elite referees were put together. More than 20 of them had to go through the training. Let's get some highlights of the training. How did it go? And will it improve the performance of the current generation of referees in the country? Assessors play an essential role in developing the modern day referee. They are the guardians of standards and provide a quality service for referee retention, development and promotion. First and foremost, the assessor's role is to help referees to improve and become better referees. We started uh, on Monday with uh, methodology. What we, we said, we have all the assessors, top assessors from, from this country, and some of them are coming from various regions. And uh, when they are here, I felt that, look, Yes, it's entitled Assessor's Course, but it is the assessors where they, we also have instructors. So we took them through what they have to do as an instructor, as a technical instructor, as a, as a coach, because every day they are teaching referees. When they assess referees, they teach referees. So there are some principles which we want them to follow, and we have actually taken them through that. We also looked at what we look at, what we, are, what we want from somebody to be an assessor. This is the quality of an assessor. It's, it's, I told them that uh, in many countries we have uh, a situation where when everybody retires, he wants to come to this group. But I was warning them that this group is not in a retirement institution, <laughs> but it's a highly technical group of people who are tasked to develop referees. We also looked at uh, they may have the qualities to be assessors. We also tackled the quality of the assessment reports. Does it meet what is required by the Federation? 
to develop referees? Does it meet what is required for the development of referees themselves? So we also talked about that. In addition to that, we, like I said in the first, uh, in the opening ceremony, that uh, we are trying to close the gap between the referees and the assessors. And then in, in doing that, we took the assessors through uh, practicals in class. And when we were doing practicals in class, we were actually looking at match situations. We play some clips, and they were there to evaluate the severity of the offenses which means when they are able to do that in class, they are easily able to do that on the field of play. But because the, the errors in class, sometimes they don't have impact on the game, we then had to go to the field of play where we had a game and the referees officiating and showing them what is required now, what is the new approach, what is the new philosophy, what is the new concept, so that when now they are dealing with referees, they will know when a referee moves this way, they also appreciate and understand because this is the new, the modern way of actually officiating. I must say, Mr. President, I was extremely happy with uh, the organization, more so when I saw the number of referees who are training in a programmed training, you know, situation, which is not available in other countries, but I could see it here. I want to start where I should end. That's towards my fellow participants in this course. We spent five days, five nights here, away from our families, just to gain knowledge, to learn something. For what reason? To develop the love we have. We are all involved in football from our young age. If we continue involving in football up to this time, it means we have a love for football. That's the reason we accepted to come to spend these five days away from, from our families. If we do that, we didn't just come here just to sleep at this beautiful place. No. We come here to take back something. As the acting chairman of the Referees Federation said, this is just the beginning. The course closes today, but our work as not only referee assessors, but as referee instructors starts when we leave this hall. We've been equipped to go and develop our referees. How can we develop our referees? We can only develop them if we take the challenge. What is the challenge is by the referees are going to take each step, every step to go forward. We need to catch up with them. I'm not saying if they run, we run. If they blow, we blow. No. They are going to study the laws to improve them themselves. And if they read and study and revise, they come back to us. What would happen if we don't know what they are asking from us? I task you to have an entry meeting with the referees before the beginning of this parliament. I know it's very short, but I task you to organize one day preparatory meeting for them. It's not going to be training. But sensitization, let them know what is at stake uh, and let them know the urgency and importance of what they are going into. And let them know that you, not that you, old men and women, had to be away for five days. There is something they call common life. Let, let there be different. Let, let there be an impact. I really urge you to organize that one day, whether it's going to be as we normally have these uh, 
uh, usual Monday meeting at the Friday stadium or somewhere, I just convey, call them, let the music, music sink. And immediately after the, the Super Navetan, the league will kick off by the 1st or 2nd of December. And there on again, we want to see that, we want to feel the impact of this course. The rest of it we'll discuss during our referring committee meeting. But since everybody's not there, I want to emphasize and re-emphasize the importance of your assessment on the sport running of the march, on the improvement of the referee himself or herself. Because what you see there and what you translate into action vis-a-vis the action or the inaction of the referee is, has a big impact on him or her. Please don't keep anything from them. We will take a short break from there. And when we return, we will continue to give you more about sports. Welcome back from that short break. As preparations intensify for the Africa Cup of Nations, Gambia are preparing for their first match. It's going to be an away leg to play against Angola in the start of the qualifiers for the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations to be played in Cameroon. The Gambia Football Federation has announced an inclusion of a new team doctor and a physio that would be working with the senior national team, the Scorpions. And for more on this detail, because there is also the appointment of an assistant coach, let's get more detail. Tom Martins, 38, a Belgian national, is the new Scorpion's physiotherapist. Martins has master's in science who specialized in manual therapy and sports physio. He worked for seven years for Belgian FA and has worked for more than 10 years at the Belgian Olympic Committee as physio of the national hockey team current World Cup champions. He attended two Olympic Games, London 2012 and Rio 2016. The Federation has further announced that the Scorpions will now have in their ranks a new doctor in the person of Dr. Landing Jaju, who works at the Internal Medicine Department of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital in Banjul. Dr. Jaju Tati is a young Gambian medical officer with a very good track record. He was formerly with the home-based national team that participated at the recently ended Wafu Cup of Nations 2019 in chess. The two new inclusions, Martins and Dr. Jaju, will begin work with the Scorpions when the Gambia plays away to Angola in Luanda on the 13th November 2019 at the start and first leg of Scorpions Group D Afghan qualifiers. The new change is geared towards the Federation's quest to comply with CAF's demand to having qualified medical practitioners with the national teams. This new development follows the appointment of Mr. Alaji Sar as assistant coach to Tom Senfet. Reporting for Q Sports, Malik Nyang. Now to the FIFA World Club Cup. Will it clash with the Africa Cup of Nations in 2021? Well, it's very likely because the FIFA World Club Cup is going to be settled in June and July of 2021. As exactly at the same time, the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon will also be ongoing. Will it kill the Africa Cup of Nations? Well, that's not my word, but words of veteran coach Claude Leroy. He says, if the competitions clash, it is likely going to kill the Africa Cup of Nations in terms of support, in terms of numbers as well as television revenue. For more on this, let's get more details on this BBC report. FIFA's decision to play the 2021 Club World Cup in June and July could kill the Africa Cup of Nations, veteran coach Claude Leroy has claimed. Set to be played in China between 17 June and 4 July with an expanded 24 teams, the Club World Cup's new timing and format both pose problems to Africa's showpiece event. The next AFCON finals are scheduled for June-July 2021 in Cameroon, although there's a possibility they could be played solely in July. FIFA's decision that June is a good time to host the Club World Cup means they are killing the nation's cup, Togo coach Leroy told BBC Sport Africa. 
when they decided to make a world championship of clubs with 24 teams at the same time as the Africa Cup of Nations. It's terrible for the projection of this beautiful competition, the Nations Cup. Reporting for Q Sports, Malik Nyang. That's all we have for you on this edition of Q Sports. Thank you very much for watching. Until we come your way next week, keep on sporting and bye for now.